Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for chloromancer yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners allies head face weapon <laughs> and also rings and food emblems flasks so on so on. everything there is in the gear uh, page we are going to go over that one as well then we are going to cover gems mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems of course we're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones or the big gems that is and then for lastly of course as you can see right here on the screen we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree as i basically call it so that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched, you can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, guys, let's take a deeper dive into the Chloromancer. Yes, so we got the Chloromancer right here. You saw maybe the demo here, but we are going to go really quickly over the abilities because they might be a little bit uh, strange or whatnot, but you might not have seen the demo and, you know, it might not have gotten all the information out of that. So the passive is basically what is happening is that when you hit enemies, there's a chance that and a little, little flower is going to spawn. And if you then hit those uh, little flowers, they are going to grow uh, instantly and then they are going to explode and do some uh, damage. And also it heals uh, people around you, uh, also allies and yourself, also the other plants uh, and whatnot. And also then you have the green gatling. That is the basically the little thing that grows as well. Uh, they grow passively a little bit, but if you hit these uh, all these uh, flowers, they do grow uh, even faster and they become uh, mature if you can say it like that and then they actually do uh, the damage that they need to do so with that said uh, then we can go on to like I said the Gatling and that's sort of a, a Gatling gun if you can say it like that it shoots really fastly uh, but it could also grow up as you can do that with your basic attacks and then you got the leaf lasher that's the one that throws it down and then it spins around uh, also the leaf lasher do have a cooldown if I, you can see right here I throw down the cooldown uh, or the the thing you can see it passively also grows and then it starts spinning uh, but if you can see right down here uh, they just have a cooldown on it if I throw down the Gatler you can see that grows also uh, right here but it doesn't have any cooldowns you can have as many as you want and let me just show you and then it grows but if you do like that you can see how fast it then grew up to be mature and then when it first is fully grown that is where it's going to start uh, doing its abilities so but you also have your ultimate and when you do use your ultimate and you get a, another set of uh, basically it's the same if you can see right there you can also use the gatling that's the basically but they're just empowered and do uh, more damage you cannot uh you know have let me hopefully this run out yeah you cannot have you know this one and it's fully grown and then you go into your ultimate and then it will not uh, just uh, it will not uh, basically uh, turn into one of the other ones so basically the ones you have in your ultimate is the one you have in ultimate and then other way around I really wish that they would change that is that if you had a bunch of these down I know that some people would probably just have a bunch of these uh, down and then then turn into your ultimate right uh, but I just feel like it would be a better uh, kind of gameplay play wise because usually now you probably saw it from the gameplay I'd usually just put these two down and then I shoot and then the things are basically done in U10 at least uh, U11 is a little bit more and you know further on it's gonna also it, in the deep dells and stuff like that you are going to do uh, a bunch more and again you can only have uh, we go into ultimate you can see these two the one and the other one uh, do also passively heal themselves up. You can shoot them as well and then will also heal them faster. But I do have the Clash Gym, which then you are in your ultimate. Uh, you basically heal your plants and you also heal your allies. So basically you don't have to do anything at all. It will just basically have a big aura that heals both your plants and your, uh, your allies. So you can sort of be a heal bot like that. That's sort of what they wanted to do with the Chloromancer. Uh, still be a damage dealer, uh, but also be in kind of the healer class of Trove. And I wish they would uh, go more into that and there would be more roles in Trove like tanks and DPS and just healers and stuff like that but because then it would be like sort of a raid because it is an MMO right so that have raids as well but that's basically abilities of all of it and like I said if you don't have the ultimate uh, I can take it out right here let me just uh, take it out real quickly yes I want to unsuck it uh, and then of course I just have to wait for the cooldown so stalling for a time so here you can see uh, you can see now I go into my ultimate and now I go into this one and as you can see they do still grow up but actually a little bit faster with the with the clash gym on it's not very much but it is uh, quite a little bit as well I could I can throw down this one again I can just shoot it and it will grow even faster but uh, with the clash gym uh, it does also heal your allies and stuff like so you don't have to shoot actually the things if you do have this one so i wouldn't say this is super necessary if you uh, want to play it's more if you want to be sort of a support but you don't really use that because it's not if you're not people not in range of you then you would like not heal people and people get sh one shot anyway because people are glass cannons right so all in all, the class gym is not that super important in in my opinion. If you are a, a Chloromancer main, you might think that it you might know that it is uh, mandatory, and then you should basically just put a comment down below. I would very much appreciate it if it's something that is actually necessary. People can always go through comment comments and see if uh, it's a necessary thing. We are here all to help each other. So it wasn't right now. We're going to talk about the class gym, but it you know goes into the ultimate and 
In, in my opinion, I feel like you can use some other things. Uh, Dichloromancer is definitely not my main. It used to be a very, very amazing boss killer. It still is a good boss killer, but they toned it down. Basically, they took the Chloromancer, made it absolutely insane. It was clearing like, you know, you 10 bosses, uh, bosses Leviathans. Uh, they were actually clearing those solo and stuff uh, on the PTS server, they, but they, then they, they toned it down a little bit more. And then it was kind of in a nice spot where it's still the best DPS that was out there. And then they turned it down a little bit more. So it's now more on the others uh, balanced in there. So I, I think that's, that's fine. Uh, I know a lot of people got upset about that, but I think it's fine that everything is more or less the same because you, you then whatever play, plays into your play style you're not forced to play a chloromancer chloromancer is not my personal favorite like i, I do don't really care too much about the plants i don't like that you can't put as money as you want down of number one i know that that's sort of maybe also quite op but i don't like these the gatlings here uh you can't really shoot, see what they do but they kind of shoot in a straight line and then if the enemies move over here they really don't follow them that's kind of my experience i mean it might be wrong on that but i kind of feel like they that's kind of how it goes so i kind of like the spinners more but there's a cooldown on it sure you can get removed that cooldown a little bit with some allies and stuff we can talk about but yeah, I just kind of wanted to just spam the number ones. Uh, that's sort of just what I would like to do. So yeah, let's talk about our subclass. The subclass, we go with the Knight. You can go with some other ones as well, but maybe the Solarian as well, uh, or the Lunar Lancer. Um, I would prefer definitely the uh, Knight uh, over the Lunar Lancer. The Lunar Lancer more caters to melee classes, uh, of course, only because of the physical damage, but also sort of be attack speed and stuff like that and sure the uh chloromancer don't mind some attack speed it's not like fully no 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 attack speed for me please it is it, it does think that, that um attack speed is quite nice it, it's not uh, but it, it goes into some other stats that we are going to look at but for subclasses i would just go with the knight uh, maybe look into the solarian if you have the class uh, but again, as I say with all these classes, is that with a subclass, pick whatever you have the highest level and the highest power rank as well. And then later on, you can move into some other one experiment with some of these if you like some of the other ones. If you want, for example, some more crit damage, if that's what you want to look for, try it out and, and see how it feels for you and so on. So basically, but in the beginning, just go with whatever class you have the highest level. If some of them are the same, then you can say, hey, maybe if you know, my um, Ice Age is, you know, the same level as my, you know, Knight, and they also decided almost the same power rank. You maybe you would go for again the Knight, but or you can try out this one if you see like again just just play around with it. That's really up what, what it's all about. I'm just saying the Knight is a really nice choice. The Lunar Lancer is a quite nice choice. The same thing with the Solarian. It could also be maybe some of the, you know, the the tomb razor or some of the other ones but knight is just overall just the best i would say because every class can use flask and it doesn't have the biggest of impact either so let's move on to some stats before we go into our uh, gear and we're going to talk about stat it is of course a magic damage user uh, as you can see here magic damage user and i have about some a little bit of energy regen I would not go into energy region uh, if you have uh, most of the dragons i have all the dragons but uh, I wouldn't go into very much of energy region. Uh, as you can see, it does drain a lot of your energy, as you can see right here, if you want to put it down. But I kind of feel like the energy region I have, I do have energy region on my weapon. It's not very much, and I'm not going into my gear right now, but I'm saying I do have a little bit of energy region. I could take off my weapon, and you can see my energy region here. If I just keep spamming, you can see it does run out, but if you're not bossing, if you're really not bossing, uh, I would not like kind of go into it like that. But if you are bossing uh, only on this character, I would probably look for a little bit of energy regen uh, here and there. But again, I would not uh, go crazy with it. But on the other hand, if you are bossing, you really don't need movement speed. And that's what I have on my hat. Uh, I actually have attack speed. I shouldn't really not have attack speed. Uh, I should have just have movement speed, but I, it's not really my main. I would just go with some attack speed instead. But we're not done with our, uh, you know, stats anyway. It's shit still. <laughs> and talking about movement speed, I would again go into movement speed just because it's just way nicer if you are, you know, dungeon farming, if you're farming, uh, if you're bossing. Again, I would go into either attack speed or I would go into energy region. That's what I would go into. Yes, attack speed 
uh, is not the, the, the best because you're not really gonna be outward tagging that much probably. Like you are gonna have your things down and that are going to do damage as well, but you have to keep them up all the time. And of course, the faster you do shoot, the faster these do become like, uh, you know, grown and then they will start shooting right but it's not that big of a, like it's it's good but it's not like gonna be a significant uh movement or increase when you do have that many dragons but that's really up to you again i don't would, wouldn't go into movement speed if you're bossing i would just go into the other things as well but i would go into movement speed if i was out there farming because movement speed is just a lot nicer because you are moving a lot and attack speed is still great but again i would go with the uh, movement speed instead of that one and then of course with the crit hit always with the crit hit with the 100 yes i have 143 percent but you should aim for 100 it's good to be if you can if you have to equip something that is going to put you over like 115 percent or something like that then unequip that and then you know equip something else uh, or change some stats into some other thing you just want to get as close to 100 percent as you can it's okay if you're 99 percent, but it's actually a little bit better that you are 101 percent it's better to be a little over than a little under that's always a, a good choice because if we are under then you don't utilize your critical damage as much as you can so yeah i would be a little bit over than a little bit under that's that's kind of how i feel like uh, it should be and then of course as much crit damage as you can get crit damage is king when you do get to over that 100 another king is of course i guess that's the queen but i guess there can be two kings but of course the light as well is very very amazing but many people say get as much light as you can and that's also true you should get as much light as you can but if you have zero damage up here you have zero damage here zero here zero all the other stats are zero but let's say you have a hundred thousand light that's also very over dramatic <laughs> but if you have so much then still you wouldn't do any damage you do have to balance it all out you have to get as much magic damage as you can you have to get that balance that 100 critical hit get as much critical damage as you can, then balance out the attack speed, maybe the movement speed if you wanted that, maybe a little bit of energy regen if you want to do so, if you're kind of lacking, if you're putting down these too much. Uh, for dungeon farming, I would say it's you don't attack that uh, much with these, so you probably don't need it, and also sometimes you can just finish it off with your auto attack, and then of course with the light, you need too much as that as you can as well, but again, don't skimp out on any of the uh, other things i feel like it's a nice balance for the stats that i talked about right there so let's go into our uh, armor here or our gear uh, we got our hat again i went with the attack speed here again i would maybe go with some movement speed but if you feel like you want to hit a little bit faster especially on bosses i would go with the attack speed here the magic damage is not oh sorry the magic find here is not something really can change you can go in for some max health if you want to whatever but right here uh, either have attack speed or have movement speed that's a choice up to you but the critical damage is a uh, is what you need that's absolutely necessary that's just that's what has to be on all your items always critical damage because it's just so good when you hit that 100 if you don't have 100 100 uh, or like really far off it uh, you can always look into other stats and such um, critical damage is still going to do a lot of damage when you do hit those critical hits but if not all your crits is going to be uh, not all your hits is going to be crits then you don't utilize your critical damage as much as you can for my staff as you saw before i went with the energy region and then a magic find and then critical damage again maybe you want to have movement speed here or you want a critical hit if you're looking for that or maybe attack speed as well but um, magic find is just more something you go for because there's not really anything else i really would love to have some some uh, some damage stats here instead or, or at least the option of some damage stats instead of just going for the magic damage but again critical damage is absolutely critical yeah no pun intended well kind of pun because i kind of knew it was coming <laughs> and then we of course we got the face here i went with the movement speed again magic damage and then with the critical damage the magic damage the critical damage on this one uh basically write these two first ones you can go with anything you really want uh but critical damage is critical again mid the pond but in this one the magic damage and the critical damage is actually critical to to have as well uh, again you can go with some movement speed if you want to uh, or you want some attack speed that can also be uh, put in there as well but the magic damage and the critical damage is absolutely 
the necessary for uh, having on your face. And I really wish that there was magic damage on the hat as well, instead of magic flying, for example. I really been really nice. I know it can't really be on your staff or your weapon because it already has, you know, damage that on the top there. So it would be something else. So I would love to see that. I always really kind of hate it that it couldn't be the same and like hat and face would be the same. For your ring, you want to look for a crystal four ring, of course, uh, with magic damage on it and light. And then the third stat don't really matter too much. You can play around with it. Uh, sometimes you want to have a critical hit ring because, and it's okay to go down the level of ring to, if you have like a level four, sure, it's cool. And it has provides more magic damage and light. And that's very, very important. But if you know your uh crystal four ring you have something like magic fine for example but you are missing let's say six percent critical hit and uh, you can't find it anywhere uh you should definitely go down a level i wouldn't go down two but sometimes it's actually not that bad to go down two but i wouldn't really go too much into it i would really then try to get another ring and maybe get a four with critical hit on it if you are missing that as well but it's okay sometimes to go down a level to get that 100 percent of the critical uh, hit because it's just so much better uh magic find yes it's great but overall the the six percent is just going to help you so uh, much more then we got of course our banner uh go with a u10 banner we know those we love those and uh, not so much but we actually <laughs> like them very much and the stats on it do not matter that's why i don't have one equipped don't really matter what stats you have on it uh, as long as you of course you get that light and you get that magic damage and that's on all of them and then you have a fourth a third stat and a fourth stat and those two stats don't really matter which ones you get you can go with some flash charges if you want to you can go with some movement speed if you like to do so but it's really up to you whatever you feel like you want to it doesn't have the biggest of impact so i don't want to use too much of your time and talking about oh you should really get this one this one it's really up to you what you want to uh, get here so let's move on to the ally the allies a little bit more fancy uh, we are going with the orchin here uh, but you can if you want to look into it but the star charge one's a little bit harder but i would say those are a little bit more min max the ones from the star charge especially for the chloromancer so because you have the ones that is right here uh, we get 400 light 25 magic damage but this one this one uh, so, uh, again from the star chart this one uh, do have a cooldown reduction of 25 percent so you do have the ultimate of a little bit more and that's where you really do the damage right so i would really go with this one if you have access to it but this one is so much easier to get so much easier and you still get the 25 percent magic find and the 400 uh, not magic find fat magic damage i mean of course uh, and the light and the same stats on this one here the only thing that's different is this one has the cooldown recovery of course that works on your it's just a flat one on all your uh, things the same thing it does help for you know uh, the leaf here so you can put that down further which i talked about in the beginning you can also do some fun with the emblems we'll talk about that in a little bit but uh, this is just so much easier to get. Uh, but if you really want to min max, I would go with this one. When I do get this one at some point, quite soon, I think, actually, I am going to, uh, of course, um, use this one definitely sure instead of this one because the, uh, the cooldown is just so much better and it is for uh, many of the classes. So when you get this one, do change it over to this one. But as long as you have this one, you are good to uh, go uh, with this one as well. So let's talk about our flask and our emblems. Let's just cover really quickly our flask. I go with the death defying. You can go with the... Uh, the banderol i think that's how it's called it gives you a lot more charges if you want to do so if you want to use it yourself i think this is much better for bossing for example because you have more control of when you are taking damage because you can see the boss it's not like small random enemies that suddenly just attacks you from the back or whatever and then you're suddenly you know just dead and it is quite a lot of magic find you actually get from not dying so death defying is just super awesome amazing fantastic you can also go with some other veils if you want to do so there's one whenever you have you know whenever you hit something you have a chance of gaining one charge back when you hit a critical hit uh so it's not a hundred percent chance when you have a hundred percent it's just when you have a hundred percent you actually have a hundred percent chance to have a chance to get one of these so 
if you had like let's say a 10% critical hit, then you have 10% of a chance to get a, ch a charge, right? So it's really, really, really uh, crazy if you don't have 100%. So, but these are there's a, some flash you can play around. There's also one that recovers on your magic find you want to use, but death defying is so easy to get. It's just so easy to to use, and you get plenty of charges out of it. It's not like bad on the charges. There is others. For example, this one is actually worse on it. I know this is the one you start with, but yes, like. This one is so easy to get. Of course, you get it from the in-game store, from in-game currency, so it's so just so much easier. And it just makes your life just way easier. Uh, there is a few mechanics that can actually kill you, so just be aware of that. It can also bug out, so just keep that in mind. When if you suddenly, hey, I had Death Defying up. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, sometimes it does happen. There's like only a few bosses that do that, like the Order Moon and such. But for our emblems, that's where the funny business kind of starts. That's, of course, we need the arcane and the martial emblem. The martial emblem, of course, is also from the store from in-game currency. So it's just godly tiered because it's so easy to get. And you get 250 uh, magic damage for 3 seconds when, when you use a flask. So if I go into my stats, if you can see my magic damage right here, I'm going to use a flask. You can see here, I almost hit a million Almost hit a million magic damage just from this one. And this is not even uh, min-maxed out as, you know, my class. As you can see, it doesn't even have the, the highest powering it can have right now because it's not my main. But I almost hit, like, 900,000 is still great. I almost hit a million, right, for, for getting it, all of these. And so that's why the Arcane and the same, oh, same thing goes for the physical damage one, the martial one. The same again for these are just called the tier. This is something you need, right? And, and super easy to get as well from the in-game store. So it's just... If they were even if they were hard to get, it would still be god tier. But when they're also easy to get, you know, they're even more god tier. Uh, a lot of people are talking long about these emblems for a very very long time. But for the other emblem, so this is kind of mandatory. The other one, uh, you can go with the tra trailblazing if you want to do so. If you want to move a little bit faster, if you sort of uh, want to go speedy on this guy. But I really don't feel like this is the speedy guy. It's more of the other ones. There's other classes that do it much easier or much more. Uh, naturally, I would say, compared to the Chloromancer. So I wouldn't really go with the clear blazing, but you do get some jumps and some movement speed if you want to do so. There's also a few things that do like increase your, uh, you know, your energy regen and stuff like that, gives you all your energy back and stuff like that. But I wouldn't really go with those for sure. There's also the uh, minions ones you can go with. The minions, I, I think the minions are, uh, are better for bosses than they are for uh, farming dungeons because Yes, the AI is not the super awesome, the best, in my opinion at least. I feel like sometimes they are kind of like wonky. Uh, they do good damage, but I feel like I just want a more control over mine. I know I do have <laughs> a one that doesn't give me this kind of RNG, but again, I feel like this is more control than I do have the allies. Of course, they have a spawn every time, but still, mm, I would just go with uh, some of the other ones as well. But you can go with an ally. An ally is always a good choice as well. There's also one that spawns like two uh, allies if you use a specific flask and stuff like that. There is some fun business you can do with that. But I go with the bountiful one and it's not talked about very much, but I do like it very much because it has a chance of not consuming a charge and that happens both on self-use, uh, self-use, yeah, they have self-use and also on proc. So when it procs, you know, this one, it has a chance of not uh, get, using one of the flash charges uh, when you I was, was supposed to die then you actually gain the charge right and then uh, you can also use it yourself I've tried that as well uh, that it also sometimes not consume a charge when it does that and it doesn't it's work for all the flask right it's not only for the death defying but it's very nice on the death defying to actually have another one hey you got another life right so basically have 20 23 24 lives or whatever you can tell but sometimes it didn't have a chance of not consuming a charge and I just feel like that's kind of nice because you can hit that RNG strike where you just like uh, proc it all the time and I feel like other emblems are good but it's i don't know i it really depends on on you again you can also go with the crow uh chronomantic the one that actually whenever you use this one it, uh, it reduces the cooldown on your abilities it's good if you really want the ultimate all the time but the thing is that again uh you don't really have other cooldowns it's really good for classes that have other cooldowns than just the ultimate uh in, at least in my opinion it's always great to have your abilities up all the time so it's not bad per se but i feel like there's other good options as well there's also the sure strike if you don't have a hundred percent as well so if you're on that 80 percent above 80 percent it gets worse and worse and worse and you should definitely not use it over 80 percent critical critical hit but if you're under for example uh, let's say 60 percent and you use this one it's, it's for 10 seconds so it's really a long time and you get that extra and yeah it's just great it's super super amazing and you can also play around it if you 
you know around that 100 and stuff like that if you want to make sure you're over that and but i wouldn't really use it if you are over 80 percent as well but that's enough about the emblems the flask and uh yeah uh the flask as well so so let's move on to some other things that we do also very much care about is of course our gems and we got our gems right here again we talked about the clash gym uh, go for it if you really want to like heal your uh, any uh, your friends around you. It could be really nice if you are running like uh, you know delve and stuff with some friends and such. It, it could be nice to have something you just heal each other a little bit, uh, just be a kind of support like that. But other than that, uh, there is not really any uh, sorry any uh, big gems in power gems that you really need. You need you do need the exp uh, explosive as I have right here. The explosive is really nice for. Uh, you know farming uh you can use other ones as well uh the, the only one that's really mandatory if you are farming uh dungeons that is the explosive because you want to hit that and then the enemies ex make a chain reaction and, and kill things but on a boss uh, it only works after you know a boss actually dies then when you make an explosion and then everything is dead so it doesn't really matter you can go with a stinging curse if you really want to uh, but it, then again you can go with really anything you'd like on these ones here there is nothing that's super mandatory as well uh, four stats on the gems uh, you want magic damage and then you want critical damage and then the critical hit uh, you want to balance out, of course, to get that 100%, but you always want the critical damage and always want the magic damage. And the extra boosts you get uh, from, and you can change around on Gemforge. Uh, I also have a video on that on the description uh, if you want to look into how you're going to move your you know, boosts that you get on level 5, 10, and 15. But always put them just on magic damage and critical damage. Uh, there is some min-maxing where you can put in, you should put more like two or three into whatever the magic damage and so on and so on. Uh, you don't really need to do that. It It is really min-maxing, but it's it's only if you want to go super, super, super deep into the delves. I'm only mentioning it because that's not really what my guides are. My guides are more for new players and mid-tier players, uh, people that are uh, want some tips and tricks on a class. Uh, these guides are not for really for people that are very well into the game because they already know what all of this is about. But if I could help some of those as well, then of course they are welcome, but it's more of a new player, mid-tier, whatever you call it, mid-game uh, players that this caters to. So um, yeah, that's what I'm saying, these uh, critical damage and uh, magic damage. So let's go for the cosmic ones as well. Of course, you got the arcane ones. Uh, these are always out there with, of course, uh, magic damage and, uh, sorry, light. So those two stats cannot be changed. So only your third stat can be changed on these ones. And of course, that is this the critical damage that you want on these. You can also get critical hit if you want to go do that. But that really depends on, again, on your how much you have of that 100%. So I would go with the critical damage. You can see I have it here as well. But since we can only change one stat, that's really what we are going to go for on this one. And the same thing goes, of course, with the uh, big one right here. I did go with the flower power because I find that pretty funny because that's a flower and I'm doing a lot of flowers as well. I do have critical critical hit here. I do need to change that to critical damage. I think I'm actually going to do that after the video uh, because you saw how much critical hit I actually did have. Uh, but I actually have to go over all of these. I'll make sure because sometimes they slip through the cracks. Uh, but the point is uh, you want to move all these extra boosts into the light. So on these stats here, uh, you want to move your boosts into light. You want to move them into there. Uh, if they're not, uh, then just move them into light. And you just want all the three boosts into the light on your cosmic gems. And for the one you really want to go for is the Battle and Berserker. The Battle and Berserker is the one you really want. You do that. It's not really anything you, you... You can use the Vampiric if you have that one, but you're not really going to do the damage. You're not really going to heal that much. So... The, this in this case there's only really the berserker battler if you want to min max as you can see i'm using the flower and i could you know defeat things in u10 pretty easily so again it's not a bigger deal if you don't have the berserker but if you get it uh, the chloromancer is a really good choice to put it on uh, especially so again you want to have magic damage, you want to have light, and then you want critical damage on this one. Just want to make sure that I said that. But I thought, it, again, it was pretty funny that this one is a flower power, and I'm a flower power a guy, boy, a girl, uh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to use it on this one. So it's pretty fun uh, to have that one here. That Because again, it was my, it's not my main. If it wasn't my main, I would go with the uh, battler. But that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything there is to do with the class. Again, uh, you can... Uh, go with all these other things so yeah i think that covers 
everything there is to this class except for the star chart which we are going to talk about right here all right first up we got the magic damage tree i sort of gave them all names and this is the magic damage path as i call it and out here is where there's red circles this is where there is going to be some new white want to get really old oh, you know those that you really want to go for the green ones are okay but kind of there's not really anything between them there is a little bit down here but there's really nothing between them. these two over here are red because uh, there's two great good notes over here and could be a path that you want to go after you go through the basically the magic damage part and then also the critical damage part as well and you really want to go down here because there's also like a 15 damage right down here in the bottom if you can see it right down there there's a 15 percent magic damage winch is pretty crazy as well because you do have to go out either this way or this way after uh, over here is the uh, magic find and the kind of the uh, magic find an xp path and uh, that's okay as well uh, you do need those you know xp for if you're leveling up or doing paragon and stuff like that but the red ones are sort of mandatory for a uh, magic damage you can go whatever you want if you want to do so but uh, these are definitely the note that increases and has some impact as a magic damage user so as you can see you can you can also pause the video if you want to and just kind of check all the things out if you want to do so which ones are you going to go for and which ones are pretty nice to have but it's not really a lot of good notes leading up to it so if you had let's say you had you could get all the notes or at least everything all the green ones and all the red ones then you should definitely also go for the green ones as well. The green one up here has some magic, not sorry, magic attack speed. That's why it's up here. Usually not many, uh, you know, uh, magic damage users, like for example, Dragonite don't use, uh, you know, attack speed, but like a Gunslinger or is Ice Age, for example, does use it. So that's why it's up here, but there might be some a little bit better notes down here. And if you, I'd rather have 15% magic damage than like a little bit of attack speed because it's not really a lot of attack speed you get out of this note here. And there's some good ones in between as well if you want to get those as well. Um, but basically you want to go through all of the magic. So yeah, this is the damage, uh, magic damage part if you can say it like that. But this is what I think at least you should be aware of these notes. That's it for the video. Click the video on screen that's coming up right now. YouTube thinks you might like it. Also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in Trove. And also hit that like button would help me out very, very much. Also consider subscribing and that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.